I've been getting asked how powerful is Gravity Sketch on Quest. So today I set out to show how powerful it is. Spoiler alert, it's ridiculously effective. It actually, for me, replaces 3D modeling programs for a lot of use cases. And yeah, you're going to hit some choppiness if you really push it. But this was made in here. And I'm going to make another similar chair in here to show the power of what you can do. I have a Rift on right now. And I also have a Quest plugged in. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to save this on the cloud. So it'll be in landing pad. And I'll save sketch. And put on a Quest. Now I'm going to find that in landing pad and open it up on Quest. It's got a download first, I believe. Now we're loading the content. And that was it. Now I'm on Quest with this model that is pretty tightly made for industrial design purposes on Rift. And I can edit it. And it's a little bit choppier, but it's totally working. That's pretty amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can do another one of these from scratch and show you how I did it. And I'm going to do it on Quest so you can see what Quest is capable of. So let's make a new sketch and discard the current session. I'm going to go to the seat reference I have and pull out some reference material. Okay, so I have my reference in here. And now I'm going to go ahead and bring in my 3D model as well. Go to prefabs and import models. So I've already put this in the cloud. So I can go in to load this OBJ reference geometry. And I've got this base for the seat that I can drop into here. And uh, I'm going to change the way that it's facing. Just like that. So it's facing down Z with Y up, which is how I'd like to work on it. And then I'm going to import that model. Now I can build my geometry on top of this reference. So to get started, I'm going to go into my tools here and I'm going to create a primitive shape in sub D mode. And I'll make that a cube, our trusted cube. I know I'm going to want symmetry, so I'm going to go and edit that and turn on mirror and pull this away. And the shape of the cube isn't the point. We just needed something to start with. So I'm going to delete those. And as I bring these over, they merge for me. Now with the grab a sphere, as the gravity sketch team likes to call it, I'm going to make this big and then just pull it down. And then I can start to put these points into place here. Checking out my reference to see what I'd need to do. Can turn this around to look at it from the angle that I'm seeing it at. We've got these bolsters that come in and they end right around here. So I'm gonna add another edge loop so I can bring these down. And you notice uh, sub D mode isn't actually putting anything on yet. So that subdivision level is off and I can turn it on here, one, two, or three. We're gonna turn that all the way up and just use it that way until it slows down on us. I'm going to go into edit mode and then add this edge loop here so we can start to create a bolster. Another edge loop. So we can bring this side up. We'll bring that seat down. That seat has a kind of a wing shape to it here. So I'm going to bring this up to capture that. And we can see that nice curve. Now that bolster flattens out right about here. So we can bring this down. And we'll bring these over just like in the reference. Now let's go ahead and start extruding this down. Kind of lining it up with the reference points that it looks like this is where the seat was intended to connect. And I'm going to switch into edge mode, grab that whole edge loop, and bring it right down in Y. Extrude, and connect. 
And we're not going to do any creasing in here because that would be too sharp. So to maintain this volume around the edge of it, I'm just going to add another edge loop around the entire outside. But we want it to look comfortable, so in these areas where your thigh would rest, we're going to make this a little softer. Just trying to make this a good place for your butt. We'll bring these all the way down to the edge here where we see this reference line. And this section will need to be split. So I'm going to add an additional edge loop here, and that's covering the side of this, which we are going to delete this point, and then we can add another edge loop, extrude that down, connect these, bring this down. Making sure this is all lined up and not overlapping with the geometry and the reference that I was given. Okay, now we can extrude this back. So I'm going to go into loop mode, extrude and push it back, and the same thing here. Except we got some extra points there, so I'm going to take it out of loop mode, connect this, extrude this, and connect it. And I'd like this to be transparent, so I'm going to make a new layer, see what's on it. Got everything there, so let's put this on layer 2 and lock the other layer. Let's extrude this all the way down. That's looking good. We'll add another edge loop here, but keep it round where it attaches. And we're using that edge loop to define this bump. It doesn't go all the way down here, so we're softening this out. Additional edge loop across and tightening that bump up. And we'll do one more, bring that down and soften it out here. One trick I just learned from Glenn Southern on one of his videos was that if you hold the grip trigger on the right hand and then use the analog stick up and down, you can change the influence of your selection. So in this case, I'm making it big and making my imp my grab area small, but my influence area large. So it moves the center area much more than the outside area. It's really nice. It's a helpful trick, especially for organic modeling. Another thing I just discovered is that if you grab a few points and you move the right analog stick, you can put them further apart, closer together along the edge loop. I'm not entirely sure what the behavior, I think it's just following the edge loop, um, but I'm not entirely sure that that's what's happening. So be curious to read more about exactly what this is doing. I think it would be helpful for creating more distance between points and making it consistently along the span. Just emphasizing that bump. Let's put a shiny material on this so it's easier to see what we're doing. Using that analog stick trick to separate these out, give more softness to that so we don't get those tight reflections. Let's bring these down. Just keep softening it out. And let's move to the upper seat. There's really no better tool than Gravity Sketch right now for industrial design, in my opinion. Visualizing it in 3D, I mean, I can even pretend to sit on it. It gives you an insane experience and accuracy, and you can see how quickly it is to produce this as well. I'm going to duplicate this and move it up. I'm going to turn my grid mode on and then make the grid nice and dense. I'm going to rotate it, snapping that into place. Let's turn it upside down. That's closer. Turn grid mode off. Move it down into position. Push the top back. Now to use influence mode, I move away from the mesh, make my sphere large, grab the trigger, and use analog stick to make the grab area smaller on the inside. That defines the amount of influence. Now I have a sphere that will soft select. Soft select is turned off. A lot of the design lines on the bottom are shared in the top. We can see that coming through the area where the logo would be. It's very similar to the area that covers the adjustment piece down here. These bolsters are much higher up on the top part, and this whole piece would probably come quite a bit back. Start connecting up this back section. Clean up any extra points. I'm going to go into edge select mode. Grab the entire edge loop. Shrink it down. Put it right about here. 
Take that off. Bring these across. And those are going to snap. It's hard to see this side. Go into Preferences. Workspace. Grab the light and point it at what you're looking at. Then delete it and it'll snap back here with the correct lighting. Continuing to snap these. Lining it up with the reference. Adding a couple of additional edge loops here. Moving the mouse away from the screen. Go into the menu from the bottom button here. Pull up smooth. Grab this and just wand over the areas. This one's really satisfying to do. Bring these side bolsters up. Give it that character in the reference. Bring the lower back forward for that lumbar support and continually looking at the reference to make sure you got the right shape. I want to split these apart so I'm going to hover and grab and then use the right analog stick apart to give them some distance and then just smooth that out. These bolsters are even higher and bigger on the top side. We'll just push this way back to hide the connecting seam. Get it really close so you don't see in there too easily. I'm going to add a supporting edge loop here so we can hide the seam that's being created by this 90 degree angle change. Keep bringing the bolsters further and further out as I look and see how far they actually go. And the whole seat is a bit thicker than I initially made it, so it looks nice and solid. So let's bring this out to reflect that. Then I'm going to grab smooth, and you can change the size of the smooth influence area. I just noticed that by using the analog stick. It's another example of something that I found right on the spot, and I just guessed based on how I've been using other tools. I just fill out that lumbar support, move that out a bit. And that's a good initial pass. We can use this as a base mesh and then build all of our seams and individual surfaces with stitching on top of this. Let me know what you think. And I know it's a pretty hard program to use. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll be jumping in and answering everything that I can. If you want to learn even more about creating in Gravity Sketch, check out this series where I'll take you through creating a 2016 R8 using Gravity Sketch. Thanks.